I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom because for this purpose I have been sent. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning Father. Father. How are you? Good. good. Sure? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. If you, this feels good to feel good. Huh? <laughs> I have a purpose to ask you how you are. And whenever somebody asks you how you are, immediately, you know, uh, we take inventory of where we are. So the question is, where are you? Are you really, really here? And uh, uh, we're here at this liturgy, this crucial point in the, in the Holy Eucharist, the Mass, is the, the liturgy of the Word. And the Word of God is eternal and it challenges us to look at ourselves, to examine ourselves. Where are we? As we enter into this church, uh, we're a little bit rushing as somebody came here early, like I do, very early. And the first thing I thought about was God. The second thing I thought about was God. And even now I'm thinking about God. And I think about God all day long, until I go to bed and I scream about God. <laughs> this is the religious life, bound to God. So when you enter into this church, you take inventory of yourself, where you are. I will give you the seven levels of where we should be, or where normally we are. Right now, we are very spiritual. But if you take inventory of yourself, the first thing is, is what St. Paul said, and he rebuked these people, uh, the Corinthians. He said this, I could not talk to you as spiritual people, but as fleshy, fleshly people. So you have the first level of carnal. After we leave this church, we can come back to the carnal level. That's where we are. Okay? And then carnal means, you know, just the flesh. We live there and we serve the flesh. The second level is, of course, sensual. Pleasure and pain. Avoid pain. Get a lot of pleasure as much as you can. Then you get to another level, emotional, very reactionary, reactive. Whatever people say, just reaction, reaction, reaction emotional. And you get into that level of mental. Okay, What does it mean to be mental? Uh, we have mental state hospital, work there for a while. Uh, and what happens is, is that people live in that mind, delusions and illusions and thinking, uh, mental. And we sometimes we just living in that feedback loop of uh, what should be, uh, what is our right, and what people should give us, and what I, you know, I lost and so, just keeping their mental. And then you move to another level, and then the level we call it the, the intellectual. Mm. Intellectual, we have experience, we have knowledge, we have degrees, and it could bring us into pridefulness, of arrogance, because I know more, I have experienced more, that level. And people live there, and they can deny God living in that <coughs> mind. There's, and then you have, Another level, you go to the actual reality, which means we are facing the reality. We are humble because of the truth. And we see this truth coming to us in the eternal word, in the gospel today. We take the word of God, and use that, and, uh, and explain the word of God with the word of God. Now, the eternal truth is not <coughs> something but someone. And we know the name of this eternal truth, Jesus the Christ the Messiah. This eternal truth comes into the synagogue. It was teaching and preaching in the synagogue. If you go to Israel, you go to Capernaum. And I mentioned this last year. I went there last year. Uh, you went to this synagogue and you take about tw uh, 200 steps right straight you know, at the door of the synagogue in Capernaum where Jesus preached. And you will, after you exit that, that, that door, and you go straight through 100 steps and you see the house of Peter right there. They take 200 steps. That's a big house. It's in Octagon, I think. Octagon, very strange house. And Jesus went there. The truth, the eternal truth, went into the house. And everybody took inventory of uh, the house because the heart of the house is the mother. And the mother-in-law, she cooks and she serves and everything, and she has the fever. Uh, the question is, you take inventory. What does... Uh, fever feel like hot or cold? 
hot, hot right? And in Israel, it's very hot already. And she got this hot fever. And the tooth came, touched her. And people ask, oh, it's very hot here. And she's even hotter than everybody. It's like hell, isn't it? Jesus came, touched her, rebuked the fever, went away. Jesus is operating not on the actual level, but on the spiritual or the divine level. Touched her, rebuked the, uh, the fever, left her. She got up immediately, and the truth said, you free. The eternal truth. Jesus set us free. But have you ever uh, questioned or asked, uh, what for? What is freedom for? Do whatever I like. Licentiousness. Do whatever I like. What is it for? Well, you take a look once again. The Lord set her free. And what did he, she do? She got up in the middle and waited on them. She served. Freedom to serve. What is your health for? Serve. What do you serve? The truth. So you can set other people free. And you serve again. Very simple, simple word here that St. Luke reported to us, but each word, each verse here has a profound meaning and application for us. Now, when, when we serve, we serve this truth, and this truth is Jesus Christ, and He is the kingdom, and this is His purpose. I come, I must go proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God, because this is for this purpose I have been sent. And this is a purpose for the Redemptors as well. We've been sent as a prophetic um, order. We are a prophetic order. We are sent to, to spread, to proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. This is what we are called. This is our charism as Redemptors. It's what we do all day, all night. And then 24-7, that is what St. Alphonse, the founder of the Redemptors said, and he wasted no time. Every moment he make a vow, a solemn vow, that he waste no time as long as he could find somebody to share, to bring, to bring the good news of the kingdom of heaven. Now you look at Jesus, after, after sunset, all who had people, had people sick with various diseases, they brought him, them to him all night long. And then in the morning at daybreak, you know, all night long, he, he taught the people and he healed the people all night long. Look at, once again, and that reality has been challenging me. And my priesthood is this. Why does the hospital open 24-7? Why is there the fire station and the police station open 24-7? Even Starbucks or maybe even McDonald's 24-7. And Jesus worked 24-7. Day at sunset and then daybreak. He left and he went to another town 24-7. He lived only 33 years. The quality of this life there. Because this is my purpose. I come to preach the good news of the kingdom of heaven, of God. So, now, we have the truth right there. The truth set us free. And this truth goes through the carnal level and goes through the sensual level, set us free to go to the emotional and the mental and the intellectual and the actual and the spiritual and then the divine in this spiritual, you see Jesus, when he touched, and the demons came out of many, and they shouted, they were shouting, shouting, you are the son of God. They know, we do not know, but the devils, or the demons, they know, they are spiritual. And the Lord came to set us free, not just from the carnal, sensual, mental, but even including the spiritual. The demon knew, and Jesus rebuked them, and forbid them to speak, because it would cause a lot of... A, Confusion or maybe chaos because the, the uh, you know the, the 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 Jews at that time the, the Israelites wanted to revolt, huh? rebel all the time, and they heard okay this is Messiah and the, the demon this demon calling him Messiah is gonna cause rebellion. The problem said no, don't speak about it. He forbid them. <coughs> now, let's move to the last part on the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the word of God speaking about the kingdom of God. When we read the scripture, and you know now the way I preach and I interpret the scripture. I use scripture to interpret scripture. You look at the structure of the Hebrew language. Every time they say something, they have a kind of an echo. You say the first sentence and there's a second sentence. 
always that uh, the second sentence of the second verse would explain the meaning of the first sentence. And then we look at the, the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yeah. The first sentence is, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The phrase, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, explains what the kingdom of God means. The kingdom of God is already, is now, and is coming. Past, present, and future. And look at the word of God and how Jesus, how God explains himself. The kingdom of God is thy will be done. Father, your will be done perfectly on earth as it is in heaven. Now, anybody in the past like Abraham, like Isaac or Israel or Jacob, when they conformed their life to the will of God on earth as it is in heaven, they were already in the kingdom. Anybody in the present who confirm their will to the will of God, the truth of Jesus Christ, you are, we are already in the kingdom of heaven. Because of where is the kingdom of heaven? It's within you, among you. And whoever in the future are becoming, conforming their lives to the will of God, they are already, they will be in the kingdom of heaven. So these are the truths and will set us free. The question is, please take inventory. Do you know the truth? Where are you living? Where are you living? In your flesh? In your senses or being sensual? Or in your mental mind? Emotional? Or maybe really living in the actual world? Practical? Now, prudence? Truth? And in the spirit, where are we? Are we living in God who is here now? Let us pray so we can receive Jesus and let him touch us and deliver us from this world and enter into the divine world of God, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen.